I found this small chest at a consignment shop over the weekend. It's actually in pretty good shape, except for some surface blemishes here and there. The problem is, it's the wrong color. The plan is for this chest to end up in our son's room, which has much darker furniture. The first step in preparing this piece for a new finish is to remove the drawers and take off the hardware. I don't plan on getting rid of the existing finish, but I do want to clean it with this solvent, naphtha. I apply some to a soft cotton cloth and begin wiping in the direction of the grain. Naphtha does a good job of removing grime and oil without attacking or softening the finish itself. You can see here how much surface dirt is coming off. At frequent intervals I unfold the cloth pad, refold it to present a clean surface, re-wet it, and continue wiping, always in the direction of the grain. The general rule here is to keep wiping until the cloth comes up clean. Now it's time for a little sanding. For convenience, I keep my sandpaper in an expanding file with the sandpaper grits labeled on the tabs. I made this cutter here in the shop from a piece of wood, a hacksaw blade, and a scrap piece of piano hinge. It quickly turns a full sheet into quarters. For this kind of sanding, I fold the quarter sheet into thirds and hold it flat in my hand. I stop at frequent intervals and refold the sandpaper, exposing a clean abrasive surface. Always sand with the grain of the wood. Doing otherwise will almost certainly leave scratch marks that may not be visible until you apply a finish. Where two pieces of wood intersect, like this, be sure and sand each parallel with the grain direction. The object here is not to completely remove the existing finish, but to eliminate any surface oxidation or loose material. I've decided to take off this back piece so I can work on it in a horizontal position. A paint scraper is the best tool for removing hardened finish like this that is accumulated at the joint. Sanding invariably leaves a lot of dust and debris on the surface. Another cleaning, using a soft cloth dampened with naphtha, will pick up a lot of the residue. This is a tack cloth. It's quite sticky. When it's wiped over the surface, it attracts and holds any remaining dust. Now this is a very important step since these particles would become painfully apparent once the finish is applied. The product I'm using for this project is a combination stain and finish. Since I've not stripped this piece, the original finish is still there, and a conventional wood stain would not penetrate into the wood. This polyurethane has colored pigments suspended in it, which is why it's important to stir it well, using a motion that lifts the pigment up from the bottom of the container where it may have settled. Avoid shaking any top coat or finish. Doing so can introduce air bubbles. These three finishes have the same polyurethane base, but different color pigments. To see which one will look best, I make up three sample boards. The center one is the closest to what I want. Next, I clip this plastic spout onto the can and carefully pour the finish into a clean container. This one-step stain and finish is an oil-based product, so I'm choosing a high-quality brush designed for use with all types of finishes. In my book, the better the brush, the better the end result, and I'm not exaggerating. I've noticed that the surface of this chest continues to have a somewhat slippery feel, despite the fact I've cleaned and sanded it. So I'm going to test a section for possible silicone contamination. Well, my suspicions are confirmed. These craters that are forming are caused by silicone that's penetrated into the existing finish and, in spots, is repelling the new finish I'm trying to apply. So where does silicone come from? Well, the most likely source is spray or liquid furniture polishes. Repeated use over time builds up residue, which becomes apparent during refinishing. Shellac has the ability to seal off silicone, providing a barrier that isolates it from the new finish.
The best way to load a brush, especially when using a finish like this one, is to wet the bristles about halfway up, then gently slap the brush on the side of the container. Apply the finish in straight, even strokes, moving in the direction of the grain. Once the section is coated, hold the brush at a 45 degree angle and move smoothly from one end to the other. This technique, called striking off, ensures that the polyurethane and suspended color pigments will be distributed evenly and uniformly. Generally speaking, using a light touch will minimize brush marks. Avoid overbrushing. As soon as the surface looks good, stop. I let the finish dry overnight. The next day I put on new drawer pulls, reattach the original escutcheons, and reinstall the drawers. From a consignment shop find to an attractive piece of furniture that's a perfect complement to my son's room. A project made faster and easier with a one-step finishing solution that doesn't require stripping.